Hi, this is Frank Demore. I'm back again. And today, earlier on September 11, 2012, in my first video, I gave you some information about the uh, what was going on between the United States and Israel, and how President Barack Obama is actually on the road to fulfill. Uh, and help fulfill Zechariah 12.3 where we see all of the nations coming together against the nation of Israel. And so I've been showing you how the, the President of the United States is actually causing a rift between Israel and the United States. There's no, there's no question he is favoring the Islamic side more than he is definitely favoring the Jews. And so this is uh, something that is very alarming, especially when it's coming from a person who claims to be a Christian like Barack Obama does. And so we need to pay attention to what he actually does because what he does is actually more important than what he says. Because the man, the heart, as I explained in my first video today, what he really does from the heart shows what's inside of him. Instead of him just saying that he is friends with Israel, we see that he is definitely uh, going against Israel in just about everything he's doing. Now, he's saying that he's Israel's friend, but we see how many times he's putting the knife in Israel's back. Now, I want to give you some more information about this. First of all, if you're brand new to prophecy, you could look it up in Zechariah 12.3, where the Lord tells us in this prophecy, and again, I put it down here, that uh, all the nations, you see, all the people that burden themselves shall be cut in the pieces, though all the people of the earth will be gathered against it. Talking about Israel and uh, anybody, obviously, who burdens themselves over Jerusalem, which the president is doing, they will be cut in the pieces, as God said. This isn't coming from Frank Tamora. This is what God is saying about people that mess around with his nation, Israel. And so let me give you some information to show you how bad the fruit is that uh, is falling from the Obama tree when it comes to comparison. Is he really friends with the Jews or is he taking side with the, the Muslims? And keep in mind, President Obama has said that he was a Christian, but he's doing the things that are exactly opposite of what God says in the Bible. He's He's leading towards what the Quran says, and he's doing what the Quran says, rather than doing what the Bible says. So, this is an article that just came out today. It says, the White House declines Netanyahu's request to meet with Obama. It says, the White House declined Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's request on Tuesday to meet with the President Barack uh, President Barack Obama during a UN conference in New York at the end of the month. An official in Jerusalem said that the Prime Minister's office sent the White House a message stating that although Netanyahu will spend only two and a half days on U.S. soil, he is interested in meeting Obama and is willing to travel to the U.S. Capitol, especially for that purpose. An official added that the White House rejected, there you go, rejected the request and said that at this time Obama's schedule does not allow him or do, does not allow for a meeting. Now the White House response mark a new low in relations between Netanyahu and Obama underscored by the fact that this is the first time Netanyahu will visit the US as Prime Minister without meeting the President. Now Defense Minister Ehud Barak tries to ease the tension on Tuesday saying that the differences between the U.S. and Israel should be ironed out behind closed doors. And obviously he said that because he doesn't want the world to see the rift. What it's really like between Israel and the United States. Now the president rejected the request from supposedly one of their best allies. And you would think that he would welcome with all arms if because you're dealing with a president or, or the prime minister who wants to propagate the democratic principles and freedom throughout the world. So he shouldn't have rejected this man's plea uh, or request to come and visit him, especially as so many times he says, yeah, the, we're, we got these fantastic relationships. Now, what I wanted to show you, guess I believe that 
one of the reasons why you told him not to come could be this. Egypt's Islamic president, Mohammed Marsai, to visit next month. Now, this came out in August the 22nd of 2012, and we see the brand new Islamic president, the extreme end of the Muslim uh, government, the Muslim Brotherhood, is coming to the White House. Now, keep this in mind. The Jerusalem, the focal point, right? Well, the prime minister, he's from Jerusalem. And uh, so when the prime minister of Israel, the capital of which is Jerusalem, asked the president to come over and uh, he travels to the United States and then the president of the United States makes the president come into the back door instead of the front door like the rest of the dignitaries do, uh, then you know you see some really stinky fruits there. Now, I can assure you this. The new president, Marsai, from Egypt, is not going to be funneled into the back door of the White House. So watch the news. You'll see him, the Islamic guy, the president of this, uh, the Egypt Egyptians now, he's going to be going right through, just like the rest of the diplomats do through, he's going to have honors and he's going to be brought through uh, the front door of the White House. Now it says this, Egypt's Islamic president will visit the United States next month and aid said Wednesday. The visit could serve as a step towards cementing Egypt's longtime alliance with the U.S. And of course, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu obviously is not Muslim, gets rejected, but when the Islamic side, their president, sure, we're going to take you right on, come on real quick. And so he's going to be able to have access into the White House where our, the Jewish friends, supposedly the Jewish friends, uh, were rejected. It will be Mohammed Marsi's first trip to the U.S. since taking office on June 30th, but not his first American experience. He received a doctorate in engineer from the University of Southern California in 1982. Now, moving to reshape the former regime's foreign policy, which many Egyptians see as too, too pro-Western, Marsi chose to visit Saudi Arabia as his first trip outside the country as president. Of course, Saudi Arabia, by the way, is mentioned that will come against Israel during the Psalm 83 war. So Saudi Arabia is his first trip as president, followed by a visit to Ethiopia. And of course, Ethiopia is the name of the nation, one of the nations in the Ezekiel war that will be coming against Israel. So you have all of these enemies against Israel that are in this article just about. And, of course, Iran is also one of the major allies with Russia in that Ezekiel war. So the bottom line here is this. Just watch the news because you can see this rift taking place. And uh, watch the news and see what kind of reception Marcy gets. And I'm going to uh, bring uh, the news to you when the, when the uh, Egyptian president does come into the White House to show you the fruits of uh, Barack Obama and where they really lie, where is his allegiance. Now, I want to uh, bring my attention to the red flag because uh, about uh, nine days ago, I warned that to watch these uh, many earthquakes that were going to be coming and the big earthquakes that were going to be coming, I did not put down the red flag. I was going to put it down today and I just had uh, this strong, strong feeling to leave it up. And uh, so far today, We've had, uh, as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven earthquakes. And uh, this is the biggest, the strongest was a 5.8, but I really believe that uh, shortly we're going to see another one of those big earthquakes. Now, anything over a six is a really significant size earthquake. And then when we get into the sevens and eight, well, man, that is, that's really rocking and rolling on the earth. So pay attention to what's going on in the news. And uh, keep in mind that this is one of the signs that the Lord talk, talked about, Matthew 24, 7, and Luke 21, 11. Now, in relation to the problem of the Middle East, going back there again, there's a video that I put up there for you. It talks about the red line being drawn. I didn't have this video earlier today when I was showing you what President Barack Obama was doing in relation to Iran, not stopping Iran's uh, quest for the nuclear uh, bomb. 
So that would be an interesting video for you to take a look at. And of course, I wanted to uh, remind you again that the biblical holidays coming up again, the Feast of Trumpets, and uh, that is on the 17th and the 18th of this month. It's the next one in line. We know that Christ fulfilled on the very day the first four spring holidays. We, re we do believe that when the Lord uh, chose whatever year it is, whether it's this year, next year, or the next year after that, that when he does, we, we believe that because he fulfilled on the very days of these four spring festivals that he will begin or pick up where he left off, which would be the Feast of Trumpets or Rosh Hashanah. Now, I've been giving you this kind of information for some time now, and I'll continue to do that uh, until after the Jewish festival. That would be it if the Lord doesn't take the church out. If he does, well, I can't at that time. I'm not going to be able to post, and uh, anybody that uh, reads or watches the video will know if the Lord came back, then, well, they made a mistake and they were left behind. But what I did is I found another site. He gave a good explanation of the Rosh Hashanah. And I wanted to post that for you. Now we're we're in a, uh, we have a group of people that are praying for the country. I'd like to invite you. You will see all the information there. We're doing it every single day. At uh, and here's the times that we're going to be doing it. So if you'd like to join, you can email me if you want, or just join this uh, phone call. It's a short time of prayer, and uh, we're just asking the Lord would bless our country.